Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on commodities, we'll look at the dollar first. The daily time frame confirmed the little bear flag, and Friday we closed down at the low of the week. So on the weekly perspective, it's a very solid pullback at this point, but it is still a weekly uptrend, so that has not been lost. If we see a bear break of 96.67, that will start to shift things. Again, bigger picture, long term, the monthly time frame, that uptrend is what is most important to me. Looked like we were going to potentially lose it a couple months ago in June, ended up holding that support. So 95.84 on a long-term monthly perspective is the most important level for me. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at the yearly chart. Wouldn't be surprised to see the potential of an equilibrium playing out where we have our high, low, lower high. Maybe this is our higher low down at 88.25. And pretty much expecting to stay within the range of 88.25 and 103.82 for a long time. So if we do bounce anything on the daily time frame, anything under 97.85 will be a lower high and the bulls have to regain the daily trend in order to have any hope of holding the weekly uptrend. Of course, if you are bullish precious metals or miners, you want to see that dollar bear break. Gold has been just fine, but we do have a bit of a triple top. The four hour time frame is in a nice tightening range. We're going to start trading Sunday night, but I would love to see this pattern remain intact into Monday to potentially trade off of this pattern when it breaks. So we have our double top of resistance, support is 14.89, and the bulls are just looking to hold that level. So pretty much 14.89 is a bear break, which means zoom out and look for daily consolidation to form a higher low. And if we break 15.10, it is a bull break and the highest price we've seen on this move and continuation for everybody. So that is the range to be watching to start this week. And if we look at silver on the four hour time frame, it's a little bit of a different setup, but similar in the sense that it is tightening up. Most important range for me is 1678. I always round down a little bit because again, levels are not exact in technical analysis. And if we held 1678, I would consider that a double bottom. And as far as the most important resistance, it's 1712. So we've got our high, low the pullback, lower high, and then we're looking to come down and form a higher low. So waiting for a tightening break of that range. XAU, XAG, so the comparison of who's stronger, gold versus silver, is getting real tight. Most important ranges here for me are 87.33 and 89.85. And if we see a bull break of this pattern, that means that gold is stronger than silver. And if we see a bear break, that means silver is stronger than gold. So if you're looking at these two individual names or two individual metals and saying, which one should I be playing, how this range breaks will dictate short-term which is stronger. NUGT, so the bull miners also in a four hour equilibrium, just the same as gold. Again, hoping gold stays in that pattern so we can play this break of this tightening range on Monday. With a bull break, we'll be looking for NUGT to see continuation to the highest prices we've seen on this move. And with a bear break, we will be looking at dust and JDST, the bearish ETFs for a short term bounce on the daily to be looking for a lower high. Let's say Gold breaks its four hour tightening range bearish. We're just gonna be looking for dust to give us a lower high compared to 1009. Just short term bounces at this point and locking in profit when we have it or at least locking in partial profit and then setting stop losses to break even to eliminate any risk. So oil has seen some significant bounce follow through off of the double bottom on the weekly time frame. The nice long lower wick staying in this tightening equilibrium that we've been watching for quite some time now. Anything under 6091 is just a lower high. So again, let's just draw this pattern out where we have our high, where we are coming from. Low the pullback, lower high. Magnet is not on today. Higher low, lower high, double bottom. And the middle of this range would be about 5560. And we are close to that level got up to 54.89 on Friday. So the bulls need to change the daily trend to have confidence we can stay in this equilibrium pattern on the weekly because if we just see a little top out and then roll back down to 50, 
odds of it breaking bearish will be high. Whereas if we see the bulls change this daily trend, we're going to be snugly back in this equilibrium and that will likely play out for another few weeks at least if we change that daily trend. So burden of proof still on the bulls a bit. Another leg up would do it to put us back in the middle of that range and a daily trend change would tell us that we are likely to stay within that range for a bit longer. Natural gas still not doing anything on the daily time frame. Anything under 234, pretty much I don't care about. Again, I'm watching the weekly time frame and anything on the weekly under 250 is just a lower high. So I personally, unless there's some kind of major news, I'm not looking for a kind of move that just breaks out out of nowhere. In my opinion, the best way that we're gonna be able to profit off this would be if we see a bounce, set a lower high, hold the low for a nice weekly equilibrium and tightening range and then break bullish in September. So the first, then I should say the next time we see a shift on the daily time frame towards the bulls, that's not the go signal for me. If you wanted to be aggressive, that would be your go signal and your stop would be under pretty much $2. But otherwise, patiently waiting for this weekly time frame to see a tighter range form and to have a more clear indication of what would be required to get a bull break. So that's where we stand on commodities overall. Nice patterns on the four hour time frame for gold, silver, and miners. Again, we might enter Monday morning pre-market and say, well, the break already occurred and that would decrease the reward potential for that trade that we would have, whatever direction that ends up being. And again, that's a perfect example of not predicting, right? So I'm not saying we're gonna break bullish or bearish on gold. The bulls have the momentum, the bears have the burden of proof on them to show us something, but I'm not predicting which direction it's gonna break. I'm, play I'm playing the wait and see game and saying, However, this direction breaks is the direction that we're going to be looking. And that I feel is where a lot of people get lost in technical analysis, thinking that it predicts things. Tell me which way this is going to break. No, I'm just going to play the break. So have a good rest of your weekend. We'll check back in on Monday and we'll see you then. Do good things. Hey guys, could you not do that to my plants, please? Hey guys.